So I wanted to do a quick little video about team composition because even if you aren't running a dedicated strategy where you have positions you want to go to, specific operators you want to run, learning how to pick out a good team composition is one thing that you can do to set yourself above the rest of the ranked audience. So for starters, I've laid out the common attacking and defending roles and I've tried to lay them out so that you can see the unique roles each side has to offer but also their counters, right? So I'll, I'll explain the counters in a second, but first if we go over the, the attacking roles typically and these can I've kind of combined both the roles that you play with your utility and the roles you play with your play style right entry isn't really a utility role it's more of a play style role um, but there are operators sort of geared toward that play style so anyway you've got uh, hard breachers this would be like a thermite uh, thermite mav ace habana you've got utility clear this would be like ash zoff thatcher uh, um, Flores would be a utility clear operator. Anyone with a GON6, Yana can technically be uh, a utility clear. And you'll notice there's some overlap because if we go to Soft Breach, then Zofia and Ash are also Soft Breachers. But Sledge and Buck are also Soft Breachers, but they don't really clear utility. They, they sort of can. Sledge can anyway with his nades, but he's more of a Soft Breacher. So you'll see there's a couple different operators as we've as Ubisoft has expanded the lineup, sort of fit into multiple categories. Intel operators would be like a, a Dokubi, a Jackal, an IQ, technically sort of a Lion, but again, that Doke, Jack, and Lion sort of also border on Rome Clear operators, so there's a little bit of gray area there. Entry, these are operators with really good guns that, again, this is more of a playstyle role. So like your Ash, your Yana, your Zofia, your Sledge, Buck, possibly, possibly Habana, if she's able to get her hard breaching done, use her utility so she can go and play entry. Uh, Air Denial slash Flank Watch, this would be a Capitao, a Nomad, a Gridlock, that sort of play style. Uh, support, you could consider Finca a support player. You can consider a Maverick sort of a support player, although again, he, he sort of also borders on like entry, hard breach, utility clear. He fits into a bunch of different roles, but supports, again, that's more of a play style role. And then finally, roam clear. Uh, again, that'd be your Dokubi, Jackal, Lion. On defense, we have hard breach denial, like Cade, Mute, Bandit. We have utility soak, like Castle, Jaeger, Wamai, Aruni. Uh, Intel denial, like Mozzie and Mute. Uh, Intel, like Valkyrie, Maestro, Echo. You've also got Roamers. These are, again, this is more of a playstyle thing, but it's basically operators without key utility that would be used on site to counter the attackers. It's more, the utility kind of allows them to play a little more off site, like an Alibi or a Jaeger, because Jaeger can set his ADSs and then kind of go. Area Denial, like a Smoke, a Tachanka. Uh, support. This one is less of a playstyle role because there are a couple operators on defense with support-oriented gadgets, so like a Dock, Rook, uh, and as of latest update, Thunderbird. And finally, we've got Intel operators, again, and traps like Capcan and, and Frost and Legion. And so now I kind of want to explain the interplay. So obviously, the link here is basically one-to-one, -one, right? Hard Breach Deniers counter hard breach operators. That, that's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, a bandit counters a thermite. For utility soak operators, it's also pretty straightforward. You know, if you have a an ash trying to hard breach a wall, not hard breach, trying to breaching charge a wall, but there's a, a Wamai magnet, then that's a direct one-to-one -one counter. Soft breachers don't really have a one-to-one -one counter with an operator role. Their counter is more defense in that soft breachers can't breach open a reinforcement. So uh, Intel denial and Intel. Again, that's pretty straight one-to-one. -one. If you're droning and you run into a mozzie pest, you are no longer droning. Uh, if you're trying to send out a Dokubi call or trying to use an IQ, but you're near uh, a mute jammer, again, pretty one-to-one pretty -one denial. Now the entry is pretty interesting. All right, one way, there, there are a couple different ways you can counter entry players. Uh, it's kind of arranged in order of popularity. So the most common is just to use Intel. So you typically start out looking for default cams, trying to figure out where they're going to enter. And then you, as you also play a, a Valkyrie or even an, an Echo who can use his yokai to kind of spot out where the players are entering, where they're pushing from. You can kind of gather that Intel to set up your defense a little bit better. The second defense against entry players is going to be roaming. 
in that if you figure out where they are and where they're taking map control and you roam so that you deny them that map control and they have to fight for it, they can't just take it, that is a counter to this play style. And finally is the area denial. You know, if you have a Tachanka for whatever reason is roaming, or a smoke that's roaming, again, for whatever reason, and they're trying to enter a door, you can Tachanka off that door or smoke it off, and that is that is a counter to them playing that role and gaining that entry. Area denial and flank watch, there isn't really a direct counter on defense, but obviously this directly counters roaming. So that's something to watch out for. Uh, support ops, this is again one-to-one. -one. Right, it, and one to one in the sense that it's play style oriented. Right, if they have a dock that's supporting the roamers, then if you have people that are droning in your entries better than the dock is playing supporting the roamers, then the attack has the advantage there. And finally, with the roam clear ops, again having intel on those roam clears and placing traps so that it's harder to clear the roam, that is that is the counter. So as you can see, a lot of the roles on attack and defense basically directly align with each other. Okay, so now we're actually going to look at what a typical attacking lineup looks like. So as I said, your two predominant play styles, and your play styles are here, are entry and support. So your entries are the ones that are taking gunfights, they're the ones going to be advancing map control, and then your supports are basically going to be supporting the team. So they're going to be kind of coordinating your hard breach operations, your droning, your map control, they're going to be supporting the entries. And then in between that is your flex, and as you can see from the big question mark here, how they play and what type of operator they play is pretty flexible, hence the name. Their goal is to kind of look at what we have in the entry play style, look at what we have going on in the support role, and then fill in the gaps so we have a well-rounded team composition. So if you're a typical team comp, you're going to want at least a soft breacher and at least a hard breacher. That's always guaranteed. On your support role, you'll likely have, if Thatcher's up, except he won't be because he's always banned, either a utility clear operator or a flank watch operator. Area denial is less common, but it, it does still exist. And then if you have a primary soft breacher, sometimes you can bring a secondary soft breacher or utility clear operator. In this case, utility clear wouldn't be like a Thatcher. It could be, if say if Ash is your primary entry soft breacher, then you could have a Zofia, or you wouldn't even have to do a soft breacher here. In utility clear, you could have a Flores. In terms of Intel, Flores would also be good. Zero would also be good. For Rome clear, you could have a Dokubi, a Jackal, a Lion. So th that, that's kind of typically the roles you'll see playing entry. Over here on support, it's guaranteed you'll have a hard breacher. You always need at least a hard breacher and at least a soft breacher, and ideally at least flank watch too. Doesn't have to be Nomad, can be a zero, but you'll always have a hard breacher. The other support role is a little bit flexible, depending on what else you have going on. It could be a utility clear operator like a Mav, a Flores, a Thatcher. And I think it's important to point out that because you can play utility clear as both entry and support, then it's really up to the player how they want to play it and what else they have going on, right? If you have two people that typically play in the entry play style and you're playing utility clear, then it's okay to play support even if you see that utility clear is listed under entry. Because ideally you want your team to be well-rounded not only in terms of the utility that you're bringing, but also in terms of the play style, right? If everyone's just full aggro, then it, it doesn't work out well. And that finally leaves the flex player to kind of choose how they want to complement whatever's going on with the rest of the team composition. If you're not really sure how to pick a good team composition, I would advise you to stick to one of the roles that you always have. So if you play support, pick a hard breacher and let someone who's more adept at filling in a team composition play flex. If you're an entry player, then pick a soft breacher and let the other team members fill in the composition. Okay, so what I've tried to do here is essentially take all the different attacking operators and put them into this format so you can kind of see what's going on here, right? So the way it works is within each of these categories, you typically want one operator under each box. So on your primary entry soft breach player, you have an Ash that checks off that box. Next, you could pick something like uh, Flores for utility clear. There you go. Your flex, again, that's a question mark. We'll come back to that. Hard breach, let's say you've got an ace. There you go, check off hard breach. And utility clear, flank watch, area denial. So again, you can choose basically any one of these. So let's say you have a Nomad. There you go, check that box off. And then your flex player is essentially if you have covered all your boxes for entry and support, but you still have a role that you need played. Like here, we've got a soft breacher, we've got a utility clear operator, we've got a hard breach, and we got a flank watch. It'd be really good to maybe get some intel or maybe get some more soft destruction. So if we wanted intel, we could do something like a zero. 
or if we wanted soft destruction, we could do like a Zoth, Sledge, or a Buck. And the reason there's kind of two distinct categories, the ones up top, up here, these are the ones that are in meta. These operators are basically always welcome. The ones down here, they're kind of set apart. Those are more situational. Okay, so I've gone ahead and done the same thing for a defending lineup, except this time I'm just gonna go ahead and skip straight to displaying the operators with their categories. This one was a little harder to do, and it doesn't make as much sense because for operators like Bandit, Bandit himself, because he's a three speed and he's got a good gun, is typically a roamer. But his role is more of a support role. So th that it, it, it's a harder delineation. But anyway, in, in looking at ops and looking at a typical team composition, you're always going to want a utility soak operator and a hard breach denier at the minimum. Typically, you're also going to want an intel op and then some form of general support or area denial op. So for example, if we have a Jaeger, that checks off our utility soak. And then if we bring uh, really a bandit, a Cade, or a mute, we'll say for this example, bring a mute, that checks off our hard reach denial, and we have some intel denial as well, so we can cross that off. In terms of intel, let's say we bring, and again, it, it kind of crisscrosses between Roman support. There isn't as as clear a distinction between the utility role and the uh, playstyle role, but let's say we either bring a Valk or a Maestro, then that checks off our intel role, and then finally we bring a smoke, and that brings off our area denial. So the flex player here could do something like a, a TB to help out with the roamers. If we're expecting hard utility clear, they could play a Mai or a, an Aruni to help with the utility clear. If we're expecting lots of pushes from different angles, say you're on CC, it's, it's possible you could bring two Harbreach deniers, so you could bring both a Mute and a Cade. It, it's, pretty, uh, it's, it's pretty much up to you. But once again, the flex role really has to know how to read the site, the map, and the other team players to figure out how to best fill in the team composition. Okay, so now let's do a little bit of practice trying to apply what we've learned about picking your op based on the role you're trying to fill in. So this is somewhat of a typical ranked role. It, of course, things could change. Honestly, for three-fifths of this, this is already a pretty good lineup. But let's just assume you get this in ranked and you're trying to pick your operator. We'll say that the map is Clubhouse. So you're looking at this and you're trying to pick a role. I'll give a, a couple seconds for you to kind of think about it and then I'll supply what, what I would pick here. Okay, here I would pick Ace. And the reason is because we've already got two soft breachers that can kind of function as utility clear operators. We've got another soft breacher that can especially do utility clear with grenades. So soft breach and utility clear are already handled. Uh, we've got this person who's likely going to be playing entry even though we really already have four entries, but that is ranked for you. And so you, you could basically just start assume this person's gonna die right off the bat. Even if they don't, it's just a safe assumption to assume that this is going to happen and, and pick based off of that. So you've got a 3v5. All you have right now is the ability to destroy soft walls and clear utility. So it should be pretty obvious that you need a hard breacher. The reason I chose A specifically is because if you're on Clubhouse attacking CCTV, then these operators are able to go below. And that means that if there's a bandit tricking, all they have to do is get the denial off once. And then with Ace, it's pretty much impossible to trick unless you're using a Cade and a bandit and they're both working together. In this scenario, ideally you'd have, instead of a Maru, you'd have a Nomad, so you could have some flank watch. But again, it's ranked, and all you can do is try to pick what's best for the team by picking your op the best you can. Okay, so here's our second example. I've been nice this time and assume that someone else is willing to play Hard Breach. That's a rare occurrence, but let's just assume that for the sake of things this is happening. Uh, the map will be border. You're attacking, don't know which site, and I'll give you a few seconds to decide who you want to pick. Okay, here I would pick either Ash or Zofia. And the reason is because looking here, we've already got our hard breach, so we can check hard breach off. We've got some form of utility clear, and we've got a soft structure here. Now, knock doesn't really bring any utility, so again, it's best to assume worst case scenario that this op doesn't really contribute anything to your team. So you assume just going in, you've only got three people that are willing to contribute and yourself. So kind of ignore her, even though she has nades, just assume especially if you aren't in a five stack context, that this person isn't going to be willing to contribute utility to the push. So we've got soft breach, we've got hard breach, and we've got a little bit of utility clear. 
in this case, I think Ash and Zofia are the best fit because they provide a little bit of entry potential, assuming that you can kind of help out Buck while Flores helps Therm. In addition, it provides that extra utility clear soft breach capability, as well as with either of them, you can bring a Claymore since you don't have a flank watch. Okay, for the last example, we're going to look at a defending lineup. I feel like this is pretty typical to something you'd see in Ranked. So just assume you're defending Clubhouse. You've got an Aruni, you've got an Ella, you've got a Vigil, and you've got a Mute. So I'll give you a couple seconds to decide what you want to pick. Okay, here I would pick an Intel op, probably Maestro. And the reason is because while this is a pretty scuffed lineup, I mean, you've got an Aruni, an Ella, and a Vigil, you really only need like maybe an Aruni and Vigil combo, or an Aruni and Ella, but not all three of them. So Aruni's gonna function as your utility soak. Ella is gonna provide some, some roam presence, a little bit of intel as is Vigil, and he's going to be intel denial. Since you have a Vigil, you want Mute to function primarily as your hard breach denial, and all of this leaves you without solid information and area denial. So that's why you'd wanna pick uh, a Maestro. Okay, so I hope that I've been able to communicate something useful to you through this video. Um, I would advocate that if you're looking to learn this sort of thing as a skill, it definitely is learnable. And it really just takes, instead of auto-locking an op you wanna play, just kind of take that time, let your teammates pick first, and then look and think, what do we really need here for this setup? What would be best for this site? What role isn't being played that I can play by playing an operator I like to play? So it, it's pretty simple. It's I would just urge you, if you want to develop this, learn to play as the flex player for a while, and then that'll help you integrate better into your team. So just as a final closing note here, I've left pretty much default team compositions for both attack and defense lineups on screen. So if you're looking for a reference of what like a, a standard attacking lineup would look like for the, the higher end of ranked and even pro league team compositions, you can reference that here.